Quality warning. Oh, I can't get out because the ship has landed in a gully. Let's dismiss it and be done with it. Ship dismissed. So long, sideline. Let's see you on the other side. Okay, there's the big mountain. On this attempt, it is basically to get up to where we were before on the first and second summit attempts and then launch at a steep angle to get me up and above the mountain as quickly as possible and then basically sit back and enjoy. And this would be what we might call an endurance summit jump. Well, that's not very good. Yes, yes, good. Okay. Uh, instead of base jumping, we are summit jumping. And uh, if I can get the angle up high, I shall shoot off as much as I can at a perpendicular angle to the surface, which should accelerate me as fast as possible away from the planet. And then I just sit back and, uh, well, watch the SRV move away. Last time when I logged out and logged back in again, the SRV was in the same position where I logged out, but was motionless. All the drift uh, characteristics had stopped, which meant that I wasn't going to go anywhere. So the aim here is to stay logged in as long as possible once I'm off the mountainside and away from the planet. the route we took up last time and the time before that. It should take me about an hour to get up to the area where the orbital cruise line, I think it's about 37.4 or 0.5 kilometers, uh, kicks in and all sense of gravity and service mechanics ceases. So up ahead you'll see a rough gully, a light -like gully there. That's my target. Once I'm up into that area, it's about another 10 or 15 minutes beyond that point and things start to go hairy. So bear with me while I do this lower slope edge. This is the first time I've done it on my own, so I'm not uh, entirely confident of surviving it without the help of other commanders around. But we'll see. Now is 16.23, we lop off three minutes, let's say 16.20 is the expedition start time. 16.20, July 11 in the year So I don't know, once we get into orbit, given that we've got no attitude or boost controls, uh, although you have the sound of it, you don't have the effect, whether or not I'm actually burning up fuel at all, the game can handle that. What I know from what other commanders have experimented with so far is once you are floating and you're off and clear from the mountain, the speed indicated on your SRV dashboard is your speed relative to the ground, not your actual speed. Because you're going up at an angle, the SRV AA can't compute that space travel value, so it just reads distance across surface as opposed to distance through space. So if it might read 15, you might actually be traveling 20 or 25, so that's not to be trusted. So 
So once I'm in orbit, if that's the definition, I'm going to try a number of experiments. And the first will be to recall the ship and see what happens. As far as I'm aware, uh, none of us have attempted that yet. Uh, obviously, if it does appear, I won't be able to dock with it because I have no maneuverability. I'm interested to see if you actually do drift straight up according to uh, the angle at which you leave the surface or whether you do go into an orbit and start to curve around the planet's surface. And my feeling is you're just going to go straight up. taking this too fast because last time with other commanders around you tend to be a bit more cautious and working as a pack together rather than just pushing on so I need to watch that but let's start modulating turning off some of the modules to save the power So down to 37% usage on the power there. That's good. So you can see that gully is a lot steeper the closer you get to it. I've been told the overall height of the map is about 50 kilometers. Uh, physically, we can't travel past the 37.5 or 0 0.4 line until uh, or when FD get around to fixing this, if they get around to that. I think they've got kind of one of two options, which is to um, solidify the mountain so that it does have mass and texture and you can drive up and want to attempt to, at the very least, land somewhere higher up. Or my instinct is they're going to shrink it down, that it's a glitch like they did with the big monolith, which would be a shame because this is a lovely feature and it is worth preserving it because it's a natural feature rather than a glitch. Um, and it does, it does beg for summit exploration. Which is a mechanic I really do like to play with in this game. I do try and summit mountains in one of the explorer systems or seek them out. But that, <laughs> that's just me. Alright, if I turn my head around the uh, vibe headset, you can see how steep this slope actually is relative to the surface plane of the planet there. Which is quite a lovely view. Once we get higher up, you'll be able to see the arc, the rim of the surface uh, from a higher viewpoint, which is truly astonishing. And of course, the nebula up there is offsetting the mountain peak in a lovely fashion, quite beautiful. Things get uh, a bit more interesting, so I'm going to thread my way a little bit using the uh, easier contour lines. I really don't want to take too many risks with this SRB, it's the only one I've got on the sidewinder now that the ASP has been parked up. Uh, right. over to the right to take that easier line or barrel straight up the center there. I think we'll go for the right. I'll open up the view a little bit which is very nice. Look at that. Got the ice clad mountains further back there. Offset or contrasted nicely with the rock ones here. It truly is a lovely place. If and when FD ever get around to the many atmospheric landings, this game is going to open up in a fantastic sense. I'm really looking forward to that. But I don't think it's going to be coming anytime soon. Alright, here we go, here we go. Let's swap this up, come on. And... nice. This is not quite where I 
think I want to do is so. Off we go, come on, up you go. There we go. Up, 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 up. Okay, if we push on along there and then curve around to the left. Handbrake is on. I must say this being the third oh I love that. I love that nebula is this great. This being the third attempt the last two times it was great fun and quite terrifying. This time on my own, there's a kind of stillness and a and what, solitude to it that's even more unnerving. Just probably why I'm going to talk to myself a lot more than I really should be doing. Alright, here we go. Let's up. Come on. So I might end up... Uh, oh, here we go. Right up there that mid-distance, which should level out, was where the Asp, my ship, the Wilderness of Tigers, came a cropper. Because I thought it was going to be a good landing zone, and what we were going to call in probably Base Camp 2. And Robert Todd, Commander Todd, who has fallen behind through some bad interdictions, rather than him pitching back down at Base Camp, could land up here instead and catch up with us. So I naively called the Wilderness of Tigers back. There we go, yeah, it was up here. And of course it promptly deployed landing gear, dropped its nose and went full thrust into the planet's surface, the mountainside, bounced away, curved around the horizon room just over there to the left, and exploded. And that was the end of that ship. And that was the first step what turned out to be a very surreal and dangerous expedition. Now, what is the, there? Do we have a contact? What have we got? Yeah, canisters, they're still knocking about. They've been up here for a while now. Right, here we go. This is opening up a bit better now. So I'm just going to park a little bit. So up ahead is the, what well, could have been Base Camp 2, but it turned out to be a disaster. Uh, over to the far right there, there's a very interesting volcanic caldera. Um, hopefully later on we can see that in better detail. But I, uh, this morning, or was it last night when I flew the Sidewinder back here, um, explored that, and you can actually, you can't land it because it's above the line, uh, but you can lower the ship into it, which is quite nice. It's like a ha, pirate's hiding base or something. Now, if I'm right, and that is the volcanic caldera, that gives me a nice line of sight, because if you track horizontally across from it, that HUD stops popping up. You can see roughly that's where the 30, is it 35 or 37.5 kilometer line, basically that cuts across, that's the orbital cruise line, so that is a good marker. So what I want to do is pick an angle of ascent that gets my nose up as high as possible, so that when I do breach that line, I'm going up as vertically as possible. Which all sounds lovely in theory, but in practicality it's probably not going to go that way at all. Now you probably can't tell this, but because I'm in the Vive headset, uh, and if I turn and angle my head like this, it looks like the ground ahead is fairly shallow, but actually I'm on quite a severe slope. Uh, and my head is tilting back quite severely just to get a view up here. get a bit more detail on the, on the caldera there, that kind of hollow uh, rim or crater, that vertical crater on the mountain, it's quite an astonishing feature. But the more I look at it, the more I'm thinking maybe that is a bit actually. Might be deleted on that one. It's only a good time here. We're not quite up to base camp 2 yet. It's after base camp 2 that all the crazy shit starts happening. Whoa, 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 slow down. Yeah, surely the sensor is not interesting. That is a great view of the nebula. I'm going to keep saying that because it is astonishing. Yeah, pretty much coming up on this camp too. 
Now the original plan, not that it makes a doable in any sense whatsoever now, was to get up into that mid-range line there, that bridge that cuts across, and you won't see it from here, but there's a gully behind it that takes you further up that would have got us onto the final ascent bridge. Uh, now I'm not saying we would have made it, but it was certainly a stairway, as it were, that got us out of this uh, steep stuff. So the idea had been to angle over to the right, between those two peaks there, and then cut sharply left behind the ridge. And you can just see that gully is beginning to come into view over on the left side. Unfortunately, I'll never know whether that would work. Uh, given what will happen, uh, it's 16.35, so I've only been around about 15 minutes now. Let's take a little stop. You can begin to see how the planet's opening up now. Yeah, that gully doesn't really show itself well from here. But you can see how stark and forbidding everything is. I'm going to go into the debug mode to give a better perspective. There we go. Let's get up a bit. So you can see that the angle relative to the uh, planet is very steep there. That big snow slab behind the SRV in the far distance is the original base camp landing zone. You can see the ice, the blue ice of the mountains in the distance, that's lovely. Other great peaks, there's a lovely pyramidal peak way off there that is well worth a punt. I think I might try that later because it's got a great shape to it. Fairly unproblematic. But look at that nebula, look at the uh, background of the cosmos there, stunning. Distant galaxies in the background. Oh, a fan of the eerie sounds happening here, it's not settling me down. In fact, let's go up and see as far as I can go up on the debug camera. So what I'm going to do now is just do a straight line up and try and pick the sharpest slope to get the bow up before I float. So off we go. Handbrake is on. Seriously? Oh well, that was that attempt over with. See if we can get back in. Oh my god, the servers are down. That's outrageous. Oh well, uh, signing off. We'll have to try that again. God knows where I'm going to respawn.